Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Doing good. So today we are talking about the Bombay Tabac Gaia Torpedo. Uh, the cigar is six and a half inch by 54 ring gauge, comes out of the Tobaccos de Costa Rica factory in Costa Rica. Uh, wrapper is Ecuadorian Connecticut Desflorado Hybrid Mejorado 2004. Uh, binder is Ecuador HVA Seca Mejorado. And the filler is Peru Hybrid Habano, Ecuador Criollo 98, Paraguay Hybrid 2000, Dominican Criollo 98, and Dominican HVA Mejorado. Uh, blended by Mel Shaw. Uh, price point is fifteen dollars and fifty cents, and the cigar came out in February of twenty seventeen. So June, what was your pre light experience like? Uh, first, in terms of look of cigar, I'm always every time I hold a Gaia, uh, whether it be the regular Gaia or the Maduro, um, I'm always surprised and amazed by how velvety and smooth the wrappers are. Uh, and this is no different, right? So this Torpedo Batola, super fine, super smooth, uh, light caramel shade wrapper. Uh, bangs perfectly pressed, seems tight, almost invisible. Bunch of roll felt spot on. Uh, got a really nice uniform gift to it. Uh, I didn't feel any soft spots. Torpedo head, finish off with a really nicely applied quadruple cap. Um, smelling the wrapper, I got namely an aged cedar out of it. Uh, smelling the foot, uh, roasted dry nuts, uh, very balanced white pepper delivery and cedar. Uh, cold draw gave me uh, cedar and a little bit of white pepper coming through. So all in all, very good. Yeah, wrapper was uh, light brown, uh, had a few well-pressed veins that were visible. Um, seams are visible, but very smooth. Uh, torpedo head, finished off with a well-executed triple cap. Um, cigars box pressed. Um, this sample had one corner that was uh, quite a bit more rounded than the others. Um, I want to say that what I recall was two edges on previous um, samples were very square box pressed, and the other two are rounded. So this was a slight variation on that. Um, single band is a standard Gaia band. You know, has some pretty nice artwork to it. Um, aroma from the wrapper and the foot were very similar, just kind of slightly different ratios of sweet hay and barnyard notes. Um, and the pre-light draw just carried a little bit of a faintly sweet hay to it. So getting into the flavor, what was your experience like? Um, starting from the first third, very uh, a subtle, nuanced kind of a delivery. Um, you know, are, are kind of the two note, two words that would describe this flavor, um, the profile rather. Uh, soft aged cedar, uh, it's front and center what they uh, buttery cream and moderate black pepper as like a surrounding test. Um, Retro Hale brings uh, intensified notes of black pepper, buttery cream, and sharper cedar. Uh, the finish, uh, really clean finish, with namely a lingering soft aged cedar. Strength and body right at that medium spot. Uh, moving on to the second third, it still kind of gave me that nuanced delivery, uh, but certain flavors kind of spike in fullness, uh, specifically I felt like that black pepper and butter cream uh, becomes fuller, but it was never uh, overbearing by any means. Further, um, you know, I, I got a few puffs of the subtle mint that came through. Uh, Retro Stoke is that uh, deeper notes of black pepper, sharper cedar, and that buttery cream. Uh, and there's still namely a lingering soft, soft um, cedar with a dash of black pepper mixed in. Strength and body still right at that medium mark. Uh, moving on to the last third, it's Pretty much an exact replica of that second third, um, minus uh, one major difference. Um, uh, I thought the profile started picking up a slight earthy uh, bitterness to it. Uh, it's not a bad remark when I say that. Uh, it actually, uh, in this scenario, enhanced the profile, uh, kind of gives it that earth, you know, good earthy backbone to it. Um, the other notes of the the aged cedar, black pepper, that buttercream, uh, still strong, full swing. Uh, Retro still has more intense notes of black pepper, sharper cedar and that buttery cream. Uh, finish also picks up that same earthy bitterness uh, in addition to the uh, soft aged cedar and a hint of black pepper uh, and strength and body, just like the first two doors right at that medium point. Yeah, initial draws uh, brought very nuanced and aged wood notes, uh, a little bit of nuttiness and a black pepper note that kind of lingered on my tongue. Um, Retro Hill carried that same nuanced aged wood nuttiness without the pepper. Um, at a half inch in, uh, the pepper dialed back slightly and the aged wood and the nuttiness became more. And then an inch in, a little bit of coffee joined in with the nuttiness and mixed well with that nuanced aged wood. Um, at an inch and a half, uh, the wood is uh, kind of becoming a little less nuanced and loses that age note and gains a little bit of darkness while that nuttiness and the coffee were still present in the background. Um, as the third was coming to a close, um, the wood get back, gets back to that nuanced and age note um, and the coffee gained a little bit of cream and the nuttiness had, had gone away um, and strength is just slightly below medium. 
Uh, and the second third, uh, the nuanced aged wood and the creamy coffee continue on. Uh, Retrohale is slightly bitter wood and creamy coffee. Um, at a half inch in, the wood transitions back to that darker profile and the coffee loses its uh, creamy note. Um, an inch in, uh, profile gains some, some of the aged wood note back, um, but there's still a little bit of darkness present there. Um, Retrohale is uh, slightly um, charred wood. And then as the third came to a close, that profile kind of, um, you know, back to the nuanced aged wood note in the coffee. Uh, and the strength was right at the medium mark. Getting the final third, um, wood note moves back to that dark profile, carries a good amount of char to it. Uh, half inch in, uh, char reduces a bit uh, with the dark wood up front. Um, Retrail is also carrying that dark wood note. Uh, at an inch in, uh, char leaves the profile, uh, and the dark wood uh, was just the lone note that remained. Um, and that's kind of how the cigar finished out for me and strength for me right at the, right at the medium mark. So getting into performance for burn and draw, what was your experience like? Um, great remarks for construction. In terms of the burn, very good. I rated uh, uh, burn picture perfect, aside from a slightly wavy burn line, uh, but it had solid self tap ash marks, averaging an inch and a half increments. Uh, it was cool and slow burning. Um, never had to revisit my letter. In terms of the draw, um, I, I thought the draw was perfect. Um, you know, cut it right around the halfway point of that cap, uh, yielded the best results. So, um, yeah, really good remarks. Yeah, burn line was a, a bit wavy throughout for me. Uh, cigar did go out on me once, kind of at the transition to the final third, and that required a relight. Um, and Ash, you know, same as you, held on in an inch and a half increments. Uh, in regards to the draw, uh, just like you said, absolutely perfect. Um, just the right, right amount of resistance I prefer, so no complaints at all in regards to draw. So overall, what were your thoughts on the cigar? I thought it was a good cigar. Um, I, you know, some people talk about the importance of retrohaling. I think for, in this example, it is very important to retrohale the cigar. Um, I mean, through mouth draws, you get a lot of that nuance and balance notes. Um, but when you retrohale, it really, you know, uh, livens up the cigar and you taste more of that note, um, uh, more of a deepness and like a fuller notes of the, of the cigar. Um, so it, it's great. I, I, uh, I think this is a great additional extension, uh, line extension to the regular Gaia. Um, and uh, I'll gladly smoke more of these. Yeah, I mean, as expected from Bombay Tobacco, you know, the cigar provided lots of um, nuanced aged wood for the majority of the cigar. Um, towards the end, the profile became a little bit darker. Um, some supporting notes of black pepper and coffee, you know, were welcome additions to that profile. Um, construction is pretty good as well. I mean, the, a little, I had a little issue with the burn, but in regards to the draw, it was absolutely perfect. Um, and just like you were saying, in, in regards to retrohaling and nuances, this is a, a cigar that requires your attention. Um, so I would, you know, recommend not smoking it while you're doing other things or, or pairing it with much more than water because I think you'll you'll lose out on some of those, uh, you know, nuanced notes to it. Mm. Um, so for the, you know, for people that like nuanced flavors, um, I think this is a must try. Um, and I think a newer smoker would even enjoy this um, because, you know, it's not an in-your-face um, cigar with strength or anything like that. It's it's really mellow in regards to the flavors and things like that. So they may not be able to necessarily pick out all the flavors. So they may not, you know, um, they may not uh, enjoy it or you know appreciate the complexity of the cigar. But it, it's not going to you know push them away from smoking something. So um, you know definitely something I think that's worth a, a try. You know for for people that are you know that don't only like full strength cigars, this is something that they that I think they should give a shot to so um definitely another like you said another good one uh in the gaia line it just you know uh the toro and the and torpedo both really good cigars so i you know i can't really complain either way so in regards to the score i gave it a 6.97 you gave it a 7.07 how do you think that matches up with your experience uh it matched up well um i said the flavor profile was overall good um really high remarks on the construction and it was just the overall good tasting cigar that uh, was seamless in terms of you know combustion and draw yeah, same as what you said. Um, the flavor is just fantastic in this cigar. Um, I mean, the final third did fall off a little bit for me, but uh, I mean, a lot of cigars just happen to be that way. It's, it's really hard to maintain that, you know, that flavor profile or to keep your profile kind of interested the entire time. So um, really good construction. Just, you know, one little burn issue that I had um, kind of knocked some points off of it. But other than that, it was, it was really good. Um, any other final thoughts from you? Um, no. I mean, just recently he announced that he's putting out a Robusto for the Gaia line, so um, it'll be interesting as well. I think it's a 5x54, uh, also box-pressed, so um, definitely looking forward to us getting our hands.
Thanks on that. We can uh, add that kind of and be able to do a comparison across the three different Vitolas for the line to do an analysis uh, in the future. So um, Mel was talking about it the other day, um, saying that, you know, it's he's, you know, with this with a shorter length, um, shooting more for a kind of a sweet spot in regards to the length. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you can keep more of the front end of what we we've gotten from the Toro and the Torpedo and that Robusto, I think it'll be a, a pretty good cigar. So I'll be interested to give that one a try. Uh, if you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us, but also check out the full written review on the website, developingpalettes.com. Uh, be sure to follow us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google+. And you can also catch all of our review caps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you on the next one.